Hi guys, this is Sam from Fluid Social and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to break down Russell Brand flirting with women. I consider Russell Brand, particularly 10 years ago, to probably be the most charismatic, most charming, most naturally successful guy with women. And I've looked a lot at what he's doing to kind of figure out what mindset he's adopted and what he's actually doing that makes him so charming and charismatic. Obviously today he's married, he's changed a lot, he's had a lot of spiritual evolution. But 10 years ago, he was an unstoppable force to be reckoned with. So let's look at what Russell Brown was doing and why it was so successful and see if you can adopt it in your own life. I feel like I'm in a cartoon in which <laughs> someone's about to get seduced. <laughs> Not me. Maybe I'm me. I'm a very good girl. Are you good? Mm -hmm. I don't think God would give you that body and then uh, give you sort of morality. Stop. Are you married? No. Are you in a sexual relationship? No. Am I? Then there's hope. <laughs> So as you can see, straight away, he gets to the point. There's no small talk, there's no warming up, there's no, there's no wondering if he, he can, he's allowed to say what he says. He adopts a, a persona where essentially, or not even a persona potentially, where he says, I am like this, this is the way I am. I am fun, I am social, I am confident, I'm not afraid to talk about sex. And so he gets away with it because he believes that he can and so he does. He says these suggestive little comments he recognises in this woman, in this case, that she wants to be playful, that she wants to be fun, and he coaxes that out of her by just presenting himself as a person to whom it's natural. He's not doing anything, he's not trying anything, he's just being the way that he is, and so she responds naturally to it. I can't fight your fiance. You don't need to. <laughs> we can work out some sort of arrangement. It's language. good that I've got both your hands. Is it getting on your nerves? No, it's cold. I enjoy it. I'm warming you up. You are. Are your <laughs> cold? They, they are actually quite warm. Oh. However, <laughs> ah, oh. ooh, yeah. Ooh. So I hear you're a very traditional guy. That you, all those critters. If by traditional you mean sex mad, then mm. yes. So you could see in that moment he was genuinely attracted, so he's not putting it on. What he's doing, that a lot of guys struggle to understand, is that he is completely focused on her. He's not trying to get her to like him. He's not trying to impress her. He's not trying to say the right things or do the right things. He is allowing himself to be completely invested in her in that moment. And the fact that all of his attention is on her and he's genuinely feeling a certain way means that she's responding to it because there's nothing grabby, there's nothing needy, there's nothing that he's trying to force. He is just an expression of unbridled attraction towards her. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means in your own life when you go up and have conversations, a lot of the time you'll get stuck in your head and thinking, what does this person think about me? What should I say to impress this crowd? What should I do to make these people like me? And the answer is you should focus 100% of your attention on them. You should be an open space in which their presence and their energy can, can shine. You should be creating the environment in which they can flourish. That's what he does and that's why women start giggling and opening up and acting in a way that they would never act on live TV or in a public form. They would never act like that. But because he gives them permission, he gives them space, he lays the stage, they feel comfortable doing it. And it all comes down to where he's directing his attention. None of it's on himself, all of it's on her. You have to move out of your chair and... Uh, Catherine she, is welcome to no, see No, she's not, it's not, no, don't do it, trust me, don't do this, don't do it. Don't even say for the queen, you can't, do don't say for the queen. For the queen! No, don't say that, please, Russell, Russell. You're beautiful. Russell, please. Oh, thank you. Should I just sit here? Sure. Please I'll just be here. Russell, look away. With my sexual charisma. So again there, he just stood up and said, you're beautiful. And there was nothing too sincere in it. There was nothing serious about it. He wasn't saying, you're so beautiful. He wasn't trying to allure her with his words. He felt an impulse with her being near him to just say it. He, he, he knew he felt it. His eyebrows raised, his eyes widened, and he said, you're beautiful. Shall I just sit here? Now, Evolutionary psychology has shown that the archetype of a man that is attractive to women is the tender defender, meaning it's someone that will protect you, someone that will look after you, someone confident, someone that yields power, yet they're tender. There's a puppy dog side to them. There's still a little child in there somewhere. It's 
the warrior who fights the dragon mixed with the child who doesn't give a shit, who's throwing sand at, at, at girls and, and pulling their hair. It's the mixture of the, of the unbridled child and the manly, competent warrior. And that's what he embodies so well. He dresses how he wants, he's courageous, he's confident, he's well-read, but at the same time, he's just a naughty little boy. And that combination is what brings that sexual charisma to him and what, the, 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 what he's commenting on in the video. He knows this about himself because he's repeated this so many times, he's been there so many times, he's seen the responses that it's become natural. He's practiced, he's not, he wasn't born this way, he put himself in environments with enough strong feminine women that it became natural for him to be that man in those environments. Okay. So, yes. Are you thinking about something? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was thinking about something. Because as you know, I've announced it. I find Catherine very attractive. <laughs> then when she said exchange numbers, I thought things that I'd like to exchange with her. <laughs> <laughs> numbers. Numbers. The fan of numbers. He likes numbers. He's not a numbers fan. And genes. He's number. All right, no, you can't. Genetic right. Info, data. <laughs> what is happening right now? Yeah, Genetic yes. info. Yeah, that's all right. It's, uh, it's and I, when I say we, I mean my husband. Yeah, but you, you know, look at the way you drop the jets. You could drop that guy any day. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, no. Russell, no. <laughs> Russell, absolutely. Stop dancing. Turn Stop. and face the change. No, Ch -ch -ch no. Changes. Turn and face the change. <laughs> so something you might notice about this video is that as he's saying this, he's not staring at her. He's not looking at her. When he's saying all these things about her, he's looking out to the audience and smiling and winking. And the idea is that he's ingratiating everyone to him and he's not making it too personal and too intense and too much of a come on. He's just expressing himself to everyone. And this is the same in real life. If you're having an interaction with a group of girls and you like one of them, you shouldn't be just directing everything at her. She's gonna to wanna to take a step back. She's gonna be looking around at her friends instead put a hand on her shoulder and say these things as you're looking at the friends and then come back to her. It should be the way that you act with an old friend or someone that you know well. There's a lot of psychology to support the idea that people who treat new acquaintances as if they're old friends tend to become much more charismatic and bond much earlier. If you create a nickname for someone, if you show express signs of familiarity, not standing with your hands in your pockets directly in front of them, but with your hand gently on their shoulder, beside them, taking that pressure off this intensity of eye contact and sort of addressing the world as you're speaking to her. And that's what you can see in this scene, why it's so lighthearted and playful and why they're behaving as if there's no camera on them at all. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, I would have probably been found ideas like uh, pick up artistry attractive. Yeah. But when you get a little more sophisticated, you realise that there is no way of tricking anybody into doing things that they don't want to sure. do. That can be anything but negative for both parties involved. So, so what is your secret? Uh, my secret is that I know that within you there is a limitless divine She's beauty, and within She's me as well. And if I connect with no! that, oh, 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 then we'll be okay. Boy. And you oh, as well. Oh, oh, and Chris, for God. He's good for everybody. Everybody is beautiful. So that's a perfect example of he is showing that he is just this way, right? And actually, usually you try and infer that, right? You want to suggest that I am this way without explicitly selling it. Because everyone knows that the rich man who says, I'm really rich, I've got a Ferrari outside and I've got three houses in Hawaii. Everyone looks at him as an insecure, sort of try hard deeply unhappy person. Whereas the guy who doesn't care to talk about his wealth, but is wealthy, he suggests it in certain subtle ways, is much more charismatic and people take that person much more seriously. But in this particular case, he got given the perfect opportunity to just essentially say it. She says, how are you? What is your way? What is your secret? And he says, my secret is that I'm not manipulating anyone. There's no way of tricking anyone into doing anything that is effective or beneficial for both parties. And I recognize an infinite divine beauty inside of you. He's just stating his whole philosophy on this, which is the philosophy of the great seducers throughout the ages. Casanova said the same thing. When he was asked, um, what is your secret? He says, I fall in, in love with every single one of the women that I'm with. And so he's had a, a perfect opportunity to show that this is just the way that he is, that he's not trying to make that woman his, he's not trying to possess her. He sees the divine feminine in women, and that's how he channels his energy. He seeks out the beauty and the femininity.
And so he can get away with this because he is that way. And that's the perfect demonstration of that. Now, Russ, I'm, I'm nervous to ask this, but you did say at the start of the year that you were considering attempting celibacy. Is that something that you have continued with? What time do you finish work? <laughs> So there, there is a certain extent to which being on camera and on the news and being interviewed, he sort of has a platform to do it. He's doing a stand-up routine at the same time. So these one-liners are going to hit in a slightly different way. Um, so I think that's adding to the appeal. But it's the same thing. He's making these comments to bring joy and bring laughter and, and sort of express himself honestly whilst bringing joy to people. And so he can get away with saying anything because there's no pressure on it. He's doing it for the benefit of everyone. What well, are you? Fifi are Box. You... <laughs> when you laugh like that, it makes me know what you'd sound like when you come. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> Is this morning telly? Yeah. So you can't put that in. About 7 a.m. So people are just. Hey, viewers, <laughs> that's what Fifi sounds like when she comes. <laughs> Enjoy your breakfast, you perverts. <laughs> Do you, um,. Ah, uh, I was gonna, you've thrown me, but Don't I, love worry. I love that you, you're throwing me. If you're ever so confused, Fifi Box, pop yourself down <laughs> on my knee and see if we can't get you pregnant. <laughs> so it's, it's completely outrageous and it's so over the top that he can get away with it, right? If he said like, if he said that in any different way, if he didn't say, see if we can get you pregnant, I'll, get you pre I'll have you pregnant by Christmas, I want to put a baby in you. When you say things in a completely outrageous, ridiculous way, you can get away with them in a way that if you said them more sincerely, like, and then we can make love, that it would be weird, right? If it's any sort of romantic undertones to it, if there's any sense that he's singled her out and he's trying to do something, it becomes very uncomfortable, very awkward and problematic. But because he's so outrageous about it and because he doesn't pause afterwards to wait for a response, he's just <clears throat> he's just expressing. He's just speaking. He's just flowing with the energy of the conversation and saying impulsively what's on his mind. He can't really make mistakes. No one's calling him up on what he's saying and saying, how dare you say that? They hardly register it. It's just funny comment, funny comment, ping, ping, ping rather than something that people are deeply dwelling on or figuring out what he said and whether it's appropriate. So there's a sense at which he is just riffing that means that without that procrastination and that pressure on the actual words and exactly what he's saying, it just comes off like one-liners in a comedy show. That's why you can say anything in a stand-up and get away with it because people know that you're just entertaining. People know that you're just flowing, that you're not censoring what you're saying. You're not filtering it. You're just going with the flow. Excellent, and my mum's not watching this morning, so that's a good thing too. Why is your mum not watching? What's she got on? Oh no, she's busy. She's away with a friend at the moment. Bring her in! <laughs> I'll take the lot of yous. Once again, you've done this Come again. on, what do you want to know? Got, it's everything I want to know. I want to know... Do you want to come over there to you? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my God. Look at that noise. Mmm, baby box. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. Come on. Oh, oh my God, he's kissing. Oh yeah. wow, okay. Everything's you, okay, isn't you, you, it? Yes, you're very You create handsome. a lot of heat. I know, because you're quite handsome. Quite and you're looking, in, aren't I? You're very good looking and you're engaged and I'm aware of that. And she's a beautiful she's woman. She's lovely, isn't she? She's gorgeous. This is all right though, I'm allowed to sit on people's laps. Are you? Can I put my hands there? Yep, oh, that's allowed oh, as well. No. Come in here. There, it's all oh, okay. Dear. Oh, it's all going to be all all right. <laughs> just, I'm just releasing the spores. There you go. <laughs> Fifi Box is pregnant now. Oh wow. Oh, mm. and so again, this is only acceptable because of the preamble. He's set a frame around the conversation, which is that I'm not to be taken seriously. Everything that I'm doing is coming from a place of love and a place of natural flamboyancy and outrageousness. And there was enough of that preamble. She's laughing, she's getting involved. You can see she's flushing, her eyes are widening and she's enjoying the energy. So at that point, it's very easy for him to sense and to read that he can come over and basically, you know, do anything, give her a hug, you know, touch. She's very openly warm towards that. And all of her signals are saying that. If you just went up and do doing what he's doing now with someone where that you hadn't established that frame, it would be sexual assault, right? But he can get away with things that most guys couldn't even close to get, or get, get away with because he establishes the frame that I'm not to be taken seriously, I'm not trying anything, I'm just an expression of goodwill. 
and people know exactly what he's about, exactly the frame that he's coming from, and so he can do things that other people wouldn't be able to do. This is a risky situation in today's time, but he can handle that because everyone is so clear about who he is and the way that he is that no one pays attention to the appropriateness of what's actually happening. Oh, oh good, that's very good. Nice, yeah, that's lovely, that was so lovely. I just turned my cheek too, that was very professional of me. Liz, that's your fault. Because you took your eye off the road because things was getting a bit fruity out there. All right, Liz, <laughs> we goodbye. Were. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's been really a one switch thing. <laughs> See you later, Liz. <laughs> that's awful. All right, that's okay. <laughs> Russell, how can I do your bra just like this? <laughs> Liz, I love you. So that actually might not be appropriate today, right? That actually might be a sign of the times. I don't know if any celebrity, however strong their frame is, however honest and open and, and true they are, could get away with that. We live in a time now where people don't look at the context. They just say that happened and that is wrong. They don't look at it in its proper context, which is that he's reading the scene. He's reading the situation. He's reading the face of the people around him and he's doing what is appropriate in that moment. But we've sort of lost some of that context um, through the media and through all of the, 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 the spotlight that's been put on issues such as these, that there's probably enough people now that could cancel him without paying attention to the, the context. If you actually look at that, everyone was enjoying it. He's seeing the feminine energy of the woman who he's kissing. He's seeing that she likes him, that she's having fun, that he's bringing out a positive, fun, entertaining side in her. And he can see that and everyone there can see that and we can see that watching it. But there's such a complicated conversation happening now that that context might not even have the correct insight. People might, might not recognise that context and say, he shouldn't have done that, he didn't get consent to do that. When actually he knew that he had consent to do that, it didn't need to be verbalised, but obviously it's complicated because there are situation, situations where in a different context someone's acting like that and it's not appropriate. And people might see this and think that they can do that and they can't. So the idea here is to start to understand the way that he's approaching this, the way that he thinks about it. What is he, what is he creating in himself? How is he viewing the world? How is he viewing himself in relation to women and how does that allow him to act the way he's acting this is not for just any guy to say oh he did that so i can do that and the point of this video is for you guys to start to unpack and understand some of the psychological programming that causes someone like russell brand circa 2010 to be able to get away with anything that most people can't how is he viewing the world and what it comes down to i believe is this he is in love with women. He loves women. He loves the feminine. He loves expressions of femininity. A lot of the women that he's talking to aren't the typical supermodels, glamour models, the most typically beautiful women. But what you notice about all of them is that they're opening up, they're flushing, their eyes are widening, they're becoming a pure expression of feminine energy. And one of the big mistakes that I see my clients make and, and guys making, who, who friends of mine or, or, or clients that I've worked with, is that they're trying to do what other people are doing without seeing the world the way other people see the world. And the difference here is he is seeking the beauty of the feminine rather than the be beauty of glamorous makeup, big lips and nice curves. He seeks out feminine energy. He doesn't seek out a cardboard cutout of an Instagram model or a glamour model or someone carrying a lot of negative energy, he seeks to bring out only the feminine, not just typical standards of beauty. And that is the big difference between great seducers and great lovers of women and guys who are men who are just sexlessly trying to get laid more. That's the big difference. It shouldn't be about notches in the bed, bed post. It shouldn't be about trying to get laid. It shouldn't be about trying to pick up women. It should be about seeking beauty in the world seeking feminine energy, giving it a platform, giving it a stage and reveling in it. And from that place, from that focus on the other and removing the focus from yourself and what other people are thinking of you and how you can improve yourself and just focusing on the joy, the gratitude, the wonder, the mystery of the feminine or of men as well. It works the same way. Wanting to enter the lives of the people around you 
is the great difference between men who are charming and men who are desperate. Hi guys, so just to let you know, the six week course is now operational. The last seven years, I've been redesigning the way that I'm coaching and I've packaged it all into a six week course that consists of a video course, an audio course, and one-on-one -on -one coaching with the sole intention of you getting the social and romantic dating life that you're looking for. We set an ambitious yet attainable six-week goal. I give you the strategy, the accountability, and all the information that you need to get there. We got three guys signed up. There's two spaces available. So get in touch in the link in the description. We'll have a call. We'll talk about your obstacles and how I can help you overcome them, and we'll make it happen. Thanks for watching.